the world to do the dignitaries in our midst. We honored to have the Vice Chancellor of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, Professor John Owusu, and maybe I get there, I will tell you my experience. Please let's do it better for our Vice Chancellor. She just gave us the welcome address. Thank you. We are also honored to have our incoming registrar, Madam Ye. We have, she is the sole donor for this scholarship as of now. And she is also the director of the. We also have some of our deans and directors in our midst. I see the Dean of Pharmacy, School of Allied Health Sciences, Dean of Medicine. Can we acknowledge? our deans and our directors. We also have the reps from the ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to introduce the chairman for today's occasion. And this is none other than of the donor, Professor John. Professor John Pong is a public health physician and an epidemiologist. He was appointed vice chancellor for research innovation and development, and professor of epidemiology and disease control at the University of Ghana. He was also an adjunct professor of international health at the Georgetown University in Washington. He had his medical education, master of science in hygiene and tropical medicine. Doma Hinkro and Boko, he, later he was later the director of research and development at the Ghana Health Services for 12 years, program for eight years. He has served as chair or member of several international communities, including the, the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene and the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. Small at all, we are very honored this afternoon to have him as our chairman. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, our chairman. He introduced me as the vice chancellor. Today is 25th. My post of tropical <laughs> established and uh, continue with uh, discussions. Um, you see, we're struggling going up, so uh, we have to manage without them, and it's not very easy. But, yeah. So, this, the registrar uh, alluded to, and also to introduce the, the speaker. So, first of all, I want to welcome you and uh, why the leadership skills, uh, capacity building, bear in mind what are for and stuff. Uh, Margaret Japon Memorial Lecture. Normally, when we talk about Memorial Lecture, we talk about people who are dead. Uh, she is not dead, and she's not going to die now. Uh, society, on honoring them, we want to celebrate such people. Something worth, and also inculcate some leadership skills. We have a lot of young it is possible for you also to get to such a position. Uh, so to let you know that it is just a regular person who, by the grace of God, has gone through all these pathways to get to this point. So she was born just like any one of you. So I'm sure you have some photos of your early childhood. So she is a normal person. And uh, she was born to uh, passed away, the late Dora Gebre Datsun, until she got a better name, uh, is, which is Japan. She went to a primary school just like you. So all of you can reminisce with this. I, I just want you to know that we are talking about regular people. So her school was the My Parents Association School. And uh, uh, from there, she went to a school like yours, uh, um, school 
1976, she went to Form 1. How many of you are in Form 1? Oh, you are the only SS3 book. She spent time in school like you. And So, so we are talking about a regular person. So you can also get to this point. But to sum up, she did her O-level at the Brie Girls in 81 and did her A-levels in 83. These days, you people don't do O and a level. She went to Legon University of Ghana and studied home science um, and got a BSc in home science in and got the opportunity to go and study Medical Anthropology. Okay. Brunel University is in West London. So she got an MSc in 1995 and a, a PhD, Tropical and Public Health Institute in Basel. In that. Beyond that, she's undertaking several uh, short courses. And uh, she worked as far as Navrongo in 1991. Um, on the vitamin A supplementation trials as a field supervisor. So uh, that, is, that is her over there, if you couldn't make her out. Um, of the Navrongo Health Research Center, she then worked on the bed net trials in Navrongo and uh, many other trials that took place in Navrongo. So you can see people who defend their PhD thesis are usually very slim uh, to that. Then she gets into her career development, working in various research centers, in her, her work, and uh, got noticed and invited to many places to work in Pram Pram. And uh, from Pram Pram, uh, you get noticed, and then you appear many other places, even sometimes representing the World Health Organization uh, on implementation research. So anytime they had to go somewhere to speak on implementation research, they went with her. So from the corner, uh, you get into the light and people begin to recognize what sort of person you are. One of the big things that she did was her work on the deployment of rectal artesunate. Uh, many of you would not know, but artesunate is one of the medications that we use for treating malaria. And uh, there is what we call the, a suppository. Eh? When the child is, is to put the suppository through the rectal area. And uh, it helps to get the child recover very, very quickly. Uh, if people who help to get this done. And once you do these things, then you get noticed and you win many more grants. And uh, you are called to help to do many things along the line. So uh, an external reviewer of the work of the Swiss Tropical Institute and then to become one of the board members of the Swiss Tropical Institute. To cut a long story short, she ended up at the Institute of Health Research. Uh, initially, as the uh, director, as the director of the whole institute. So this, in short, has been her, her pathway. Uh, Three years ago, I identified global. She was one of the 12. And these things have a cascading effect. Once you are noticed, everybody wants to be associated with good things. So how she has impacted health work in the, uh, in the world as a whole. Fast forward last year as the 
there was a prize money of 20,000 euro. And I was just doing some calculations today. At, uh, so, hold you ground to all this. Again, to let you know that she is a regular person. She worships. She is a regular person. So, just to let you know that um, you don't have to be somebody which is where uh, she worshiped regularly until she came to Paul Rees Presby, where she participates in a lot. Uh, and the, the fine gentleman has worked with her for the last 32 years. So, since then, she never walks alone. So, if you don't belong to this way, three adult girls. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is Professor Margaret Japon who we are celebrating today for her work uh, and her contribution to society and humanity. And I come and give the inaugural is no other person than Professor Esi Ewa. And she is going to be talking to us on Professor Esi Ewa is a professor of environmental health sanitation. You have, you have the uh, almost won many, many, many awards in that field. Just like Margaret, so you can make her out. She's in Achimuda. Mm -hmm. And um, can you make her out? Who said yes? Who said no? So that is your assignment. Anyway. So, her formal education, 1975, and did her BS in Biological Sciences at KNUST in 1980. So, and then she did Environmental Science at the College of Environmental Science and Forestry at the State University. Uh, she has accounted 13 Let you know that other skills along the line. So this is, this one is very easy. Okay. And then she grabbed somebody on campus. Again, I'm telling you this story. Sometimes uh, the impression is given that female scientists are in some cloud of their own and they are not human beings and they even get married. And they say, if you learn to get a man to marry you, haven't you heard that? To get married. You can get married, whether female scientists or not. <clears throat> She got promoted to become a senior lecturer and then an associate professor before becoming a professor. Or uh, you are a lecturer before you become a senior lecturer. And if you fulfill all righteousness, you become an associate professor. It means you are associating with the professors uh, before you become minimum, minimum 12 years. That is if you check all the boxes. Uh, you have to spend three years at a certain point, another three years somewhere, another four years somewhere. Minimum. So it's not just the years, but the work that you do with it. And she became head of department. Uh, she even became the dean of the engineering school. Foundation vice chancellor of the University of Energy and natural resources. Mm -hmm. 
be, being a vice chancellor is challenging enough. But to be the foundation vice chancellor, it means you are going to build the university. That is what I want you to get. So she is the one. But to do, uh, people are talking and you are writing, you are taking the notes. It, you start from somewhere. And then when you hit the line, right, you begin to get the recognition and the awards. So Professor Isika was appointed the uh, Foundation Vice Chancellor of the University of Energy and Natural Resources in the She led the university to achieve many, many awards. But on her personal note, as I indicated to you, she has been a serial re recipient of various awards in the area of care and to many people. The biggest award, an award, a national award conferred uh, by the President of the Republic on outstanding people. So these are not very small events. And continues to supervise her PhD students and check their work very meticulously. So, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Isiwa will be speaking to us. I present to you. Professor, one thing I want to add is Professor Isia Wise, you has anthem. So, just for the record, for the face, you sing, you behind it. the young one. And for that reason, she said she doesn't want to use any PowerPoint slides like some of us do. Some of us, without PowerPoint, we cannot 30 to 45 minutes. And then you can ask as many questions as possible so that we'll take it from there. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Isi Ewa. What a delight. Thank you very, very much, Prof. Wondering what you wanted those pictures for. If I knew this, I would have given you more. But thank you. Day by day, they pour out speeches. And night by night, they pour out knowledge. When I look at the work of your hands, the magic tonics, and then the moon and the stars that you have put in place. What is man that you are mindful of him, the angels, and you have given him dominion over your creation? Oh Lord, count the things that you have made. It will be amazing. Lord, we finish. And you will make us rise. You will make us shine. And you will make us productive. It's very, very important. And I want to congratulate my sister, Margaret. Margaret is way my junior at the Briggles. When I went to do my sixth form, we were all in. Today, we are going to look at a topic. Harnessing the potential tomorrow. We she was surprised that her daughter is doing this. I don't like the fact that he said he changed her. Does the plan in it for no? And she can do so many things. So you see, beside hers is not being said, thank you very much to who a girl chose for the girl child. They, they said that. By or he has a womb and he has eggs in her body and she can deliver. Please ha have this in your mind. The definition that the girl child is such a delicate thing that needs to be protected. The girl child starts from the 
day she's conceived, and if you don't protect the girl child in the womb, she will not even come out. Some countries and some cultures have made there was a policy of one on more favorably than they had men. If you marry an Indian lady, you want to marry me, you have to bring something to my parents. So, all these things are happening. Even what are girls for? One thing he had a son was always women. Because he is the one to give the X chromosome. And he we're not getting wives. I'm not surprised that they are moving away everywhere. I'm sure they are looking for uh, some Ghanaian women. That's why we are seeing Chinese children in our villages. And the case of rape, many girls. I was nearly aborted by my parents. Sometimes it's a decision intelligent and therefore able to be aborted. What a sad. And there would have been no. So the girl child is very important. I want to encourage young girls here that if you are pregnant, don't abort it. You don't mind anybody because you will grow to become the child. And my mother was a student. Later on, my father was in Ghana. So you can imagine. Later on, when I met him, he denied me. But when I met him, meet the students who come to the university, they don't know how to handle themselves. You could see them. For me, so at the airport, we had airport, we, uh, planes were flying in those days. And then the car would drop me at Accra, take me in to Ebri Girls. I was sitting like, I had people who could serve me. When I went on holidays, there was a cook steward by me. And then once we traveled by the head of state coach, I don't think president, what a delight. And my mother also became somebody so big and he, she helped my education. Now the girl child, she looks so beautiful and pretty. A colleague of mine wrote a book and I stopped there. Uh, this book later will bring five years. I mean, the friends who are supposed to take her who want to do it with these children. And she actually interviewed them. Look, if I were to ask the girls here, how many have been, I have met big women in this men have done to them. She is also very vulnerable. She's not strong physically. But if you do exercise, protected. In that, she doesn't know many things and she has to learn. And the parents are responsible for her training. No, is that she must have a You are not a, a woman because you have several hundreds of tender age. I had my menses when I was about 15. These days, the studies we did and in one of the schools, as early as very careful because you can conceive at that point in time. The, that girl notwithstanding, I want to say that menstruation is a very good thing to have. And you will be surprised. I was surprised myself when I read that the menstrual blood is the best source of stem cells. Those who are doing medicine would testify to that. I don't want to add the others because some people are very bad. They can collect the stem cell uh, from uh, women menstrual period. But you see challenges. One, she is looked down upon because of her menstrual cycle. So such a royal is having her menses. Is that where to put her? And they don't allow them to go to certain places. Do and the schools don't even have toilets. If you are bleeding and your 
Some in the villages, so I know what happens. Go and change and come back. Some will not even come to school at all. It is a time to protect her. She is the mother of tomorrow, and she must be protected. The girl child is so important. We have seen that in this whole world, we have about 1.1 million. This is an opportunity for us, useful to society, as her problem. She's the one who will go and fetch water. The grandfather never woke the boys in the house up to go and fetch water in the middle of the night. When that was the only time the Akin or the water runs, in the morning you have to go to school. The house chores are done by uh, the girls. We do everything, but the men don't do it. When I asked that he should go and sweep the rooms and lay the beds for girls who will come and go and throw the garbage away, a male doesn't do all these things. So he doesn't know how to do those things. He's finding it so difficult because also helps. Who will go? The, the boy will stay idle. I have warned my sons already that the girls, me, they are also in school. They are studying. They are undergoing the same things you are also studying and going through. So, we have to share the housework. Are the men happy about this? Uh, it means that the girl child also must be protected. In the night, when in some cultures, the two people, even when we travel, many years ago, there were no toilets by the roadside there. You have to go and do it in the bush. So then they will stand by anything and do anything and go away. So the girl child really suffers. Another thing in my research that I, I found was that even the toilet, I know the woman, when you sit on it, you are not very comfortable. I just ended a workshop and Uganda, Tanzania, and we asked them to go around and look at our toilet facilities and send us their comments. Even if you want to clean yourself, you are in your menses, and then you've seen that, you've soiled yourself. There is no hose, and the, and the hole is so narrow. So, the design of the toilet seat, designed by men, they did not consider the girl child as the girl child. I think that Margaret is a very good example. Look, it doesn't matter how you start at anything. The welfare of people. Sometimes people wonder how a biologist go into, and it was there that I even didn't want to go, but it was there that I saw the importance of biological sciences in engineering. You will need biologists to look at the water you are supplying to the people. To make PhD thesis was on the public. You can do anything you want if you are really determined. The girl child has a lot of potential. She is very wise. So the girl child should not think that he has to depend on a man for existence. Please, men, you are very important. But uh, I want to tell the girl child that you can make it. My son, one of my sons told me, he met a, a woman, she's 47. She, the woman is saying, eh, this man, he doesn't even seven. My mother is 60, 65, and she was making Kenke Barak. You know Kenke Barak? Margaret knows. When I retired as a VC, I looked at uh, the whole so I said, Ghanaians must eat their local food. I saw students eating indomie all the time, this fried rice. So I asked myself, what kind of nutrition 
are these people taken into their bodies? In future, it will have an effect. So, I am going to introduce special Kenke called Kenke Barak. I name.
I had the logo. I said, eat local, stay healthy, and live long. Be sure that, know that it involves a lot of hard work, lungs, synthetic heart. And the doctors are now using very sophisticated equipment. And uh, some of the doctors, they don't know. It's the writing as usual. I wanted to on how to use modern these modern equipments and to develop them and write programs for the dean of medical school is here and he's listening to me. He has to take an action and to look at this so that they are unable to design who was very sick. And he's not as educated as I am. And then in a dream, she went to heaven. So the paramedical staff who came, they had small computers by their side. And then they touched the sick person, cut it, and quickly did something. And I sat in the ambulance. It was so beautiful. The inside. I haven't been to uh, the inside of Ghana's ambulance. So I can't, I can't say much about the ambulances that uh, we are having. And so she was telling me, he said, oh, all these things you are seeing, it's already in heaven. Screened. And when you are screened, everything goes to the doctor's table. And then she said, there, there are different treatments for it. How about you are doing it to physical diet, exercise. Okay, some of the sickness, you have to change your diet. My foot was hurting. I told a colleague doctor, he said, you are it. I wouldn't like uh, to take any medication. When he told me that, he said I should go to the hospital. I said, I won't go. If it is too much protein, I will stop eating meat and fish for one week. And the pain left. So she said, they did Jerry curls in heaven for her. And the following day, she was fine. And then I said, oh, God, I am a man who is highly educated. He could have told this to me, and I, I would have seen it better. But then I looked at our hospital. You, you may have to cut your and you have looms in the hospitals we have. Because this one, it was seen. So, and we have to have the scale history. And that is why China has developed, giving everybody the opportunity to develop. The other is you must be alert all the time. Look, we can fight in space if we, we know cybernetics. We understand cybernetics. And it is important that every student undergo this training. And then every student take a course in critical and analytical thinking. Potential to face the right. For me, my children love reading. WhatsApp, oh, these are your challenges. WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. The whole child is meant to go and stand. And later on, I learned that is wrong with you. You should have a vision. So, train her how to. And she also taught me how to type. Those days, uh, if, you, if you are not too good, then they will take you to type in school. But she had done secretarial science. So, she taught me how to type. So, in America, I was typing the whatever you know as a mother, you have to teach your child. Don't let her rest in the room whilst you are working on becoming a princess. She will become a burden and they will bring the, the daughter back to you as a mother. Apart, but it is important. And make sure that he is also responsible for something in the house. He could be very young, but give her a I was a fishmonger. Every evening when my aunts bring fish from the coast, we have to smoke them 
And then early in the school, and I was fortunate, there were no watches. The train was my watch at 7.30. Now you have watches, you have time on your phone. Then Madame Gertrude Quay had not thought, hey, Margaret, you won't benefit from this. More important than I don't look at the monies they have. And, she, and that is how to harness the girl's child potential. Most importantly, think that the world doesn't have an owner. It has. They declare the glory of God. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. When I look at these majestic mountains, so attractive, who made them? What is happening in the asthenosphere of the earth crust? God made them all afraid of anything. I was not afraid of men. I was not afraid of women because I have a big God on my side. And then, harness the potential by teaching the, the benefits that I get from the planets. They are singing. Even trees are singing. My husband is a plant pathologist. And he told me about how plants cry when they are sick. You see, you didn't know about this. And they also produce certain chemicals. I'm happy that you have uh, preserved the trees. They are singing to the glory of God. So I can imagine when you cut a tree, what they do? I'm sure they'll be shouting, AJ, 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 mankind, I am here to protect you. Look at its functionality. We are losing our forest, and this is very, very sad. The other thing you have to teach the child again, as is in music, sing in your heart. Music heals. You remember there was a man in the Bible called Saul. And any time he is sick, are you doing that? Medical musicology. If you have not introduced it, you better do that. And I'll come for the graduation of times. Once I was so weak and I sat by the organ. And as I was playing a Presbyterian song, this strength came upon me and I revived. What musical instrument can you play? If you go to the developed world, you see mothers playing a guitar. Every day, book. Every day, book. Book, book, book. The child doesn't know anything. Do you have a swimming pool here? Live their lives one day. So you are preparing the girl child you are harnessing her potential in all tell her why she menstruates. If they understand, they won't give you any problem. Teach the girl child how to have a vision. I learn how to study and be successful academically, and I still do it. I have a timetable, and then I spend my more time on my weak subjects. Somebody, history is her best subject. Math, she doesn't do, but you will not look at math. Always history, always history. He gets A in history, and math, he gets F. Don't do that. Plan and make sure. And then I have my house, my physical uh, activity. I think that I do at home. I have to wake up, I have to sleep, I have to do this. You have to plan. These are your challenges in the future, and you have to do it. How you will take your kids to school, and how you will take good care of them. It's all on my timetable. And then I have a, a future. I told myself that I was born out of a wedlock. If a man does not take into the altar, we also interview some girls before their marriage. Hey, these days, I'm even afraid to mention the number. Some people interview the ladies. Hey, 
this girl, she's about 25. And I said, hey, during our time, even one is a problem. Oh, man. But the men, too, they are not, they, they are not too different. So, which means, you saw how beautiful I was in, when I was very young. I was so beautiful. Then, if you call me, how dare you call me like that? Look, I am a, a woman, a woman of substance, and I have a vision. Please, I will not allow you to ruin my life like that. I am going to reach the highest peak. Then one day, I was sent in the night to go and buy something. And then one of the boys came to attack me. He, he held my neck. Oh, thanks to the man who saw that and came to save me. He would have killed me <laughs> because I, I told him my piece of me coming to call me. Are you my... They say there is equal. equal. You are nowhere near me. I'm sure later on he became a Christian and uh, he met me. I've forgiven him. But vision. I plan my vision every five years. It is only the Kenke Barak that I lost. Now, in, in, oh, and then every year I knew so happy when I finished and I was them. Who told you? It is who to it. Is coming. He doesn't know the challenges. So the person too is excited. It's God who has made us like that. Otherwise, so um, our man has a role to play to put up good schools, good educational policies, and then parents and society must own what he has destined you to be. You, you has. Your blessings are in the song God gave me. Come and reward you. God bless the people of this land. Declare that your roads will be asphalted so that your shoes do not get destroyed. I think she Big round of applause. And so I was just thinking of preparing a broadsheet or opening a register with me. I will forward it to her. Whether or perhaps contributions. of Kenke Barak. Maybe we'll have an opening here in Ho where we'll do the Kenke Barak. And so if you have a few of those questions, we want to take questions and maybe contribute if you have any. You can I see a hand down there. Please just descend a little. So, Professor Ofori, a question, or maybe I wanted to comment on it. There's this saying that women are their own enemies. How would you comment on that? Professor Ofori, and I went to Ola Girls. Ola Girls are in their house. Yes. Prof, having gone through, um, I know that the girl child, during her part of sexual feelings, it's biological. And so those of us who went to girls who are lucky, we go to school and there are no boys around to disturb us. But when you go back home, you receive a lot of letters. That was in our days. These days, I know we have mobile phones, there are pictures, WhatsApp, and all that. So in that state of confusion, at this era, what should a girl child do? That is my first question. I don't know whether I'm permitted to ask the second one. 
Secondly, you said that the woman should be ready to plan her life with a friend or someone who is also trying to make up his life. These days, the observation is that men who are already having it all, and they even look down on men who are planning their life. But the mistake is that the woman or the girl child doesn't know the future of that man also. And at the end of the day, they realize that they should have waited to begin with this man. And so the girl child is stuck and thinks that I have made a mistake. What should the woman do in order to avoid such mistakes? Thank you. Please thank you. Um, with that could hit the girl child. And she might think she wants to give up. I want to ask what motivated you along the way. Thank you. So we'll take a okay. We'll take one more and probably we'll respond to them. What happens is that when the other woman is not rising and the the other woman is up, then there is a problem. But if you have a vision and you are carrying out your plans, it will not happen. The mentorship program will stop this. We are all together as women and mankind. See yourself as one. Mankind is looking up to us. We have to study hard. Uh, we have to work hard. You are lucky. Uh, I will sing a song at the end where we'll look at we are women for the... Is anybody from Organization of Women in Science for the Developing World here? This is the anthem I compose for them. And they teach the young girls that the world is looking at you. So, the other one is uh, how to... What the... What, sexual development. I went to a mid school before a girl's school. For me, I topped the class. And then the teacher said the men were sitting there for me to top. So at one time, when I was studying, they came to hit my head with branches. That's why I went to every girl's. But now they have stopped. Now, the sexual feelings are there. You are, what do you think, oh? If you think and you watch things like that, you have a desire. I told you that, I told that uh, those boys who were following me that I am a woman of substance. These things, I wasn't bothered because my thinking was to make it in life. Look, I didn't plan five years so when I was in school. I planned 20 to 30 years whilst I was in school. And the library was my friend. So I was reading about what was happening in other parts of the world, different professions. The things I wanted to do, you guys have no idea because I was reading. I had even planned marriage, or even in secondary school. But so every, my prayer timetable, I pray for my future partner. Every day, which is uh, a Tuesday, is for me, my future, and my children. And then I pray for my work. So I carried on this throughout my university. When I was in the university, I had bought my saucepans and frying pan already. But I, you know, it's a vision. And you don't rush into it. So when I was in, a, in the SS as you are now, I wanted to go to the university. I said, I have to go to the university. And then I need exposure. I have to go abroad and continue my master's and do a PhD. Those days, we had something we call commercial. Come and see. So whilst other people were moving around, having boyfriends, going to sleep with them, no, I wasn't doing that. Too. I was studying GRE. 
graduate entrance examination because I wanted to go and do my master's. So the degree was there. I was thinking of uh, where I should go. And you see, because I was thinking of marriage, I had uh, admission to all the three universities those days, KBAS, Legon, and Tech. And I said, oh, as for Tech, if I go there, I will meet a doctor. I will meet an architect. I will meet a pharmacist. I will meet an engineer. These are the, well, what do they have? I won't go there. <laughs> so you see, I had planned my life like that. And then, uh, the motivation that uh, put me along, carried me on. I'm a very happy person. And I'm happy when people prosper. That was my motivation. I really love to sing. And I knew that in future, I will become a great person. I had that in mind. I, did, I wasn't thinking that uh, small, small things. No. Even in the university, as soon as I got there, I said, I have to be a vice chancellor. I was the first female to apply uh, to be a vice chancellor. I asked myself, what are they doing that I cannot do? Hey, are they here? So, I, that is what I said to myself. So, right from the word go, I started uh, writing and doing things. So, I've done so many things. I said, what makes uh, somebody a, a professor? Your service, the community, publications, research, the grants you have won. If you see my CV, I've won so many grants because I had in mind, and you, if you are starting life and you are in SS, SHS, you are not planning of advancing your degree. No. Have a good motiva motivation. I knew I'll be a great woman. And here I am. But my success, I give credit to God because I knew God when I was in uh, class five. Is it class five? Class three. Because I could read and understand. So I knew God was always with me. And he will direct your steps. If you have your creator guiding you, you can never go wrong. And he will guide you. He guided me into making my plans. What do you want to be in future? That should be your motivation. And not to go and marry somebody and then you have children and every day you are frustrated. If you see another woman progressing, uh, you are not happy. And then you become her enemy. No. We can all make it. Everybody. So I think what did the person say marriage? Is he asking me marrying a young man? Oh, yes. It is, it is good. In fact, my husband has really helped me. He really helped me to write my first IFS grant because he had done it before. And he, he, he's my chief admirer. When I, I made my first album, she came to hug me and she was so happy that I've made my album. If I had married an elderly man who is rich already, what has he got to do with this? And we work together, we think together, we plan together. And I have colleagues, uh, hmm, they marry some rich men who will be bringing their cars when we were students. Then when they met me, said, oh, AC, that's why you are so fortunate. I said, you, instead of marrying somebody of your type, your age, you went and married this rich man. Now, you see, when I go to conferences, my husband, he, he's not worried. He's not worried at all because he knows me. But the old man, mm, my friend, he said, oh, AC, you are going. I can't go. My husband is uh, very suspicious because he is old and you are also young. So, Please, uh, marry somebody who can really help you. My five-year plan, I, I think I said that 
uh, when I was in school, I had planned to go to the university. So after the university, I had made plans also to go and continue my education and come back and help build my country. So those were my plans. But all along, I ran through my plans. And also uh, building a house. Actually, in class five, I had designed my own building, a five-bedroom house. You are sitting here, you have no plans in your head to build a house. How can you build a house? But I'm glad I have built more than uh, three houses, you see? Because it ran through my life that that is what I want to do. Somebody was telling me, said, ah, me, I don't want to be a lecturer. I said, why? He said, oh, the highest ambition of the lecturer is to build a three-bedroom house at Ajusu. And when he retires, he goes and stay at Ajusu. I said, oh, please, the lecturer can have other things and help co uh, uh, <laughs> society. He said, no, 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 this one, uh, I wouldn't. See, so he's even looking at us as lecturers that our vision is to have a three-bedroom house at Ajusu. What an insult. Ah, that is the vision. We must have a better vision. And I, I am still dreaming. Huh? I am up to uh, seven. But I'm still dreaming and thinking about what to do. You have no idea. As for the Kenke Barak, it's not easy to make the Kenke Barak, oh, I've told you. So uh, I have everything. If you want the franchise, I will give it to you. But then I've seen a lawyer. Somebody has come to buy the franchise of Kenke Barak, and uh, I'm working on it. I'm limiting the person to Kumasi. So uh, when you come, I will limit you to this region, who, and every year you have to give me some money for my franchise. Okay, we'll take some more. Nobody asked on this end. Do we have a hand up? Okay, there's a hand up here. Good afternoon, one, one again. Um, I am Yvonne Odonko. Um, sometimes the resources are not there to help the girl child. So what are the other ways that can help us to attain our own vision? Okay, I am a student of you has also trying to help myself in this um, handmade stuff. But, but sometimes going to the people to tell them you do this kind of stuff, they'll see you and they'll think that you are not well um, right for this, this work. So with, with my question, I want to ask if maybe you don't have any other resources, what are the other things that you do to get to attain your, your, your vision? Thank you very much. Madam Registrar, I want to ask. Auntie AC, congratulations again. It's always a pleasure to listen to you. And thank you for a wonderful delivery. So uh, as the young lady was asking the question, what else to do when you don't have the resources to forge ahead, I thought I should share and maybe comment on some of the things you said. You see... Um, secondary school life can be very difficult in our time if you didn't have the right parentage support and all that it was difficult um, I didn't enjoy my secondary school days in fact I don't remember a lot of things because I just blocked it out we were the the, the poorest and, and, and some of our teachers even took advantage and kind of in, in my school at the time if we're not a certain class, nobody really paid attention to you. So all these things made you um, have a certain concept 
that life was going to be a struggle. If you are not careful, you tend to give up. So the other things to do, if you are not in that class, and if you, you think you are not going to be able to make it, is to make yourself indispensable. What I mean is that you, 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 you do well and you are best at what you do. Nobody can ignore you. If you study very hard, you are good in your subjects, or you get you, you join a debating club, or you, you know, you make yourself available and and uh, not noticeable in a wrong way, but doing things that other people may not ordinarily be able to do. So in my school at the time, I was I was a barber. We didn't. It's not these days that Ola has a. Uh, a barbering shop now underground somewhere they go and cut their hair. So we were the female barbers in the in the in the dorms. Everybody will come and call. If I buy your hair, you give me one tin of sardine. If I buy your hair, you give me one tin of mackerel. And that is how so people knew you that you could do other things and you endeared yourself to them. And so that feeling of I can't make it because I don't have was never really there until we completed and we, we got into other things. So I think that sometimes you need to just make the effort to see the positive and brighter side of things and not dwell on, I don't have the resources and I don't, I know it can be difficult, but with a little determination and zeal, it is easy to do. We all envisaged, I always dreamt that I was sitting in a big office in a very big chair. And it came to pass. So it is possible. No matter the, the background, no matter the circumstances, it is possible. Thank you. I guess that should be it for the questions. Oh. You see that uh, what she, she said is very right. Life is not a bed of roses. If you don't know, when I was in primary school and I didn't have anything to do, I became a head porter. I'll go and carry the fish of the market women who were going to Aprade at the train station. And then they would give me some money. I will go and fetch firewood. And, and I will get money. But if you don't want to humble yourself and do things like that, it will be problematic. In fact, when I return from the U.S., I came alone with my boys. And you should see, some diplomat has bought me nice prams. And I was selling ice water at, K at Tech Junction because the salary was not enough. One week, it is gone. And my husband, too, was not around. At that time, too, I made Kenke and so on. At that time, too. So you see, you, you have to change your attitude. What is wrong if you become a head porter? These days when I go to a juice market, girls in essence, they are head porters. They carry things uh, and then they, they, they take money. When I see them like that, I give them more money. And then you see, if you study here, I got a full scholarship to secondary school. My scholarship was so much that when I completed or dance school, my mother had to go for the balance <laughs> because it was, it covered everything. But you saw how I was studious. I didn't play with my, my studies. Thank you. Because it's coming from Malko, I'm tempted to accept some more questions. So one question from Malko. Did we have one from Ola? Oh. If you hadn't raised your hand, I'm sure Registrar will tell you something. Good afternoon. So we'll take two from there. Please, I will want to ask what it takes a girl to build a foundation as in a club which aims at educating girls to build on their potential. What would it take the girl to do that?
Thank you very much for, for creating this platform to educate the girl child. My question is, what are the factors you have to consider when planning your future? Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Maud. Um, please, I want to ask what inspired you to become a lecturer? Because some of us, we normally change our career. For example, for me, when I was in JHS, I was inspired by a 22-year-old female who wanted to be, become a pilot. And now I'm in SHS, I want to be an architect. I want to... <laughs> So I want to ask <laughs> how you stick to one career. Thank you. Another one. So this is the last one. Please, good afternoon. Um, I want to ask what course you studied in SHS, and then is it necessary for you to go in line of the course you study? Because for example, it is believed that if you do science, maybe you want to become a doctor, if you do um, general arts, you want to become a journalist. So I want to know if it's always compulsory to do something in line of what you're studying in SHS. Thank you. Um, in Ghana, it is important what you are doing at SHS. You cannot do vocational skills and then go do French, history, government, uh, some nebulous program, and you say, I want to be a doctor. It can never happen. You have to, ah, are you doing it here? You ask. You see, you even those with very good grades, they couldn't get in, into medicine here. You have to do the basics, physics, chemistry, biology, Math. Those are the science subjects that you require. The same thing in engineering, physics, chemistry, math. I don't know who provide you with uh, career guidance. I think uh, we should begin to do that so that you know the subjects that you have to do to do medicine. It is amazing how somebody who had done history and government and then he did, uh, what else? I've even forgotten. RM. And he, he did what? And the father told me that I should look for a medical school for her because she did so well. I said, oh, I am a VC and I'm advising you. He said, no, my friend says that she can do uh, medicine. You can't even do nursing, I'm telling you. <laughs> you can't do many things. Maybe journalism. So... You must know. It is on the internet. Why don't you go and find out the, the courses you have to take in order to do a particular program? You just don't sit there, and then when they don't get admission, they cry. Uh, my, I mean, I did well. A lot of people come to my house and cry, and I look at them. I said, ah, oh, you have spoiled their children. He did it, and then he's here crying that I should go and look for. A, it's not whom you know. It's not whom you know. It's what you did and how you performed. <laughs> there was another one. He said, building a foundation for uh, girls. I think that is a, a good idea. I have a girl at a, a tech, Portia, and she's doing so well. He's encouraging the girls to be independent. And I go and talk to the girls all the time. See, now you have Facebook. So you can begin to create uh, friends. And then you invite them little by little. Sometimes it requires uh, funding. And you need to apply for funding. And then if you get it, that's fine. So get your friends together and share. Even what you have learned today, share it with a friend. And then your friend will also share with a friend and then you create a foundation. Switching career choices. I wanted to be an engineer when I was in Odana Secondary School. So I offered to do physics, chemistry, art, math, and biology. And I was the only 
girl doing hard maths. And because they beat me, I stopped. I said I was afraid because I was the only girl. But you see how I ended up? I want to do biology. Then I changed. I said I wanted to be a nurse. So I went and read. I saw how neat nurses were, how well dressed they were. I didn't know that. It's a lot of work. Hey, please, uh, don't change your profession. I also saw that you have to be committed and sacrifice. So some people go in, like what I was thinking, to dress nicely, my shoes, and wear my cap, very neat. Hey, but I didn't know that I have to carry people's feces, and when they vomit, I have to carry all of them. Hey, it's a lot of work. So I changed my mind. <laughs> I changed my mind. So, and I wanted to do medicine. But those days, I, my grace would not make me uh, enter into medical school. And my friends uh, went to do medicine. And I had to do biological sciences. And I was told that if I do biology too, I can become a doctor. But it's not true those days. It wasn't true. So I did that, and I said, what is closest to health? And microbiology. So I did microbiology, and I'm glad I did microbiology. It has helped me so much that I am so important. Microbiology. Is that all? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome um, to this session. Um, Professor Awa is in the sciences, but some of you here may not be science students. It doesn't mean that you should switch from where you are to go and do science. If you're already doing science, yes, you can pursue some of the careers she's talking about, but you can still be excellent whether you are in literature or history, or geography, wherever you are. So the most important thing is study hard and pursue excellence. If you looked at my background, I started off, in fact, I wanted to do law because I was always reading. And then I went to Tema General Hospital one day and I met a lady in white. And I liked her so much. She was so beautiful. And I asked, who is she? They said she's a dietitian. So I said, oh, I like that. I want to be a dietitian. So you see, many of us change along the way, but it gets to a point where you really have to be focused. So I asked, how do I become a dietitian? And then they said, oh, there's a course in Legon, home economics. If you go and do that course, you can become a dietitian. So that's how come I went to do home economics in Legon. And then I found out that they didn't do a course in dietetics in Legon. And I had to go abroad to go and do it. But my mother hasn't even sat in an airplane before. And my father had died long ago. How could she take me abroad to go and do this course in dietetics? So I finished home science. I didn't like it at all. They did something called research methods, and we had to go to uh, Anumle and Christian Village to go and do all kinds of things. I hated research, but today I'm in research. So, but when I, I finished my course at Legon, I did my national service at the um, University of Ghana Medical School Community Health Department. And that was where I developed the interest in research and in health. So sometimes you start on a particular line and you come across certain circumstances that change your whole orientation altogether. So yes, have a plan, but be focused. Because you may start wanting to be a lawyer, and then you end up being a researcher. Thank you. I think we can now give a standing ovation to Professor Isiwa as she resumes her seat. Let's give her a round of applause as we give a standing ovation.
choir, can you give us a rendition whilst we get ready for another part of the program? Okay, if you're not ready, you can hold on to that. We would now have presentation. Um, so, Prof, we'll have to invite you up again. I will have Professor Margaret Japon to do that for us, to do a presentation to Professor S. E. Ewa. Oh, let's appreciate them as they come together. Let's appreciate them as they come. Ladies and gentlemen, you can all attest to the fact that uh, Professor Isi Ewa has delivered a wonderful lecture um, this afternoon. And I believe that many of our young ones here have been encouraged. Um, we learned how she started from humble beginnings and where she has reached today. Um, we want to thank her very much, and we have this little, what should I call it, citation plaque or something, to give to AC, uh, Prof. Ewa, just to say thank you to her. So, University of Health and Allied Sciences honors Prof. AC Ewa for delivering the maiden lecture on the theme, Harnessing the Potential of Today's Girl Child for the Future at the Maiden Professor Margaret Japong Annual Mentorship Program for Female Students and Academics, presented July 25th, 2022. <laughs> hey. <laughs> we have something else for her. Um, VC talked about the fact that she composed the UHAS anthem. We are celebrating our 10th anniversary, and some of our colleagues are wearing the university cloth, and we think we want to give her um, a piece of the anniversary cloth and a T-shirt so that you can remember UHAS wherever you are. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Please, let me say thank you to you, Has, my twin brother. God bless you. I'm very grateful. And so we'll continue. There have been a figure they have been mentioning all along, 20,000 something something. I have even forgotten the figure. In euros, 20,000 euros. That is what my people will call Ameflega. That is money enough to buy a human being. That's how my people will call it. <laughs> and so, it is now time to launch the Dora Gertrude Quay Scholarship. And to do that for her, there's a history to all of this. And of course, there's a way to administer the money and to tell us all about that and give us an overview of why and perhaps what that fund, the Dora get to Quay Scholarship Fund would be doing. Help me with a bigger round of applause to welcome Professor Margaret Japon. 
who is a sole donor for this fund to give us an overview. Thank you very much. Um, a lot of people have asked me why this fund was named after my mother. And when I talk about my mother, I get quite emotional. Somebody I grew up to know who was selfless, somebody who didn't have much but gave up so much of herself to make others happy. My mother got married quite early. She's the second born of six children. She happened to go to Kobo Girls Training College. She was a teacher. And then after school, she couldn't continue um, to do further studies because she had the responsibility of taking younger siblings. So she had to go and start work. And while she was working, she met my father and they got married and I was born. My two younger sisters after me. Growing up, life was good because my father worked as a managing director in those days, Grand Tobacco. It was British American Tobacco. Life was great. I did ballet. My ballet clothes were brought in on British Airways from the UK. I went to a Swiss boarding school in Accra. It was wonderful. At age nine, my father dies. We move out of our house in Tema, Kaiser Flats, the place where Parks and gardens used to come and manicure the lawns and do beautiful things. And we moved to a single house, a single room in Committee 8 in Tema at that time. So my mother, my two siblings, and I lived in this one room house. And that is where I grew up. Life was not easy. My mom decided not to remarry but to focus her attention on her children. She sold everything under the sun. The money as a teacher was not enough. We would make bread rolls and sell. We would make cookies and sell. I learned how to crochet table cloths and table mats to sell, to be able to supplement the income at home. In primary school, sometimes you have breakfast at home, you go to school with no pocket money. It wasn't there. And you came home, and whatever was available is what you had to eat. And I learned how to eat and love simple things. One of my house helps laughed at me because I liked Banchian Pessier and Nyadwa Froe. Do you know what that is? Uh -huh. And those days, my mother would go to committee one market there's the Kwasia Jasso, and there you can collect a lot from the floor, the, the garden eggs, and she'll bring it home. And we used to have it on Fridays, and it was called Foolish, because you just put all anything in it, and you would eat. Life was tough. Going to university, uh, those days you, you had a little bursary, and you went to school, but my clothes were limited. So I had my shoes for church, for classes, my slippers to walk around with. I didn't have much. But this woman did everything she, she had or she could do to take care of my sisters and I. And she said she can invest a lot in me so that I can take care of my younger siblings. But she said one thing that stuck with me and which I've told my three daughters. She said, no matter who you get married to, don't quit the job that you have. Continue in it. While she was married, my father felt that being a teacher, she didn't bring enough home. And so she should quit and he could take care of her. 
if she had quit her job when he died, she wouldn't have been able to take care of us. She said, I don't care whether you marry the president of Ghana. Pursue a career and stick onto it and make a living for yourself. She died one year after I got married. She never saw any of her grandchildren. The only thing she wanted, she said, when you start working, I want a blender. Today, I have more than one blender in my house, and my mother is gone. Sometimes she had to sell her cloth so that she could pay our fees. Today, I have two or three more cloths in my wardrobe, and my mother is gone. But she taught me one thing, giving. No matter how small she had, she gave, she shared, she, she, she just gave to people. And she said her reward is in heaven. Now my sisters and I have always wanted to set up something in her memory because of the impact she made in our lives. And we didn't have that much money to put together. So when the award was announced and it came with a 20,000 euro prize, the first thing I thought of was to set up a fund in memory of my mother so that we can remember her name, we can remember her every time. People ask me, why did you put the whole lot in? And I said, if I kept some for myself, I may have bought another pair of shoes. But do I need it? There's somebody sitting here whose parents are struggling to look after them. It doesn't mean you should let yourself go. Prophet Wea said, she told the boys off. It doesn't mean you should let yourself go. If it's only two or three clothes that you have and you can wear them, wash them nicely, iron them nicely, and wear them. If somebody had told me many years ago that I'll be standing here giving away 20,000 euros, I would have told the person they are lying. But thus far has the Lord brought me. He has never given up on me. And I know God will never give up on you. So this is named in honor of my mother because of the sacrifices that she made for my siblings and I. And for the lessons that she taught us. She taught us hard work. Life was tough. She would go to Temahabo. She would buy fish. She would sell. She would go to TTL. She would go and buy cloth. She would sell just so that she can put food on the table for us. So that is why this fund is set up. And we have sent out um, an invitation for people to apply for the fund. Please be honest with your submissions. And that's what we've told everybody. Sometimes people say they need help, but they know they don't need the help. You know if you really, really need help. The deadline is 31st of July. It's for UHA students. Those of you who are coming into UHA, who are struggling, you have an opportunity when you come in to be able to apply. We are hoping that with this fund, we'll be able to pay people's school fees, their hostel fees, and maybe provide them a little pocket money. But you must maintain a certain grade point average. So it doesn't come to people who don't want to study. You may not have, but you should be brilliant and focused. And these are the kinds of people this is for. So on behalf of my siblings, my family, my husband, my children, we make this donation to you, Has, so that somebody out there who is struggling will be able to have some support to take care of their education. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. We now invite the chairman and the vice chancellor of this university to officially launch the Dora Gertrude Quay Scholarship. All right.
So, having heard everything, it is now my singular honor and pleasure to launch the Dora Gertrude Quay Memorial Fund for Brilliant and other University of Health and Allied Sciences. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm supposed to give some closing remarks. Um, so, as you could hear uh, Professor Iwa talk about her humble beginnings and uh, uh, how great things emerge from humble beginnings, and Professor Margaret Japon also tell you about humble beginnings and how great things emerge from humble beginnings. I think it is very clear that even though your beginning may be humble, as the scriptures say, so prosperous would your future be. I come to love this portion of scripture from Job 8, 7, so much so that I keep referring to it. But I think for many of the young girls or ladies around, what I gathered from Professor Uwa's talk basically suggests that we all have capacity. There is something within us that God has placed that helps us reach what the goal. And we should not just sit there and wait because we can do something from wherever we are. So wherever you are, start and use what is in your hands that has placed in your hands, what he has blessed you with. Do what you can uh, wherever you find yourself. Because everything is possible if you put your heart to it. We find ourselves at different stages in this whole business. 
I believe you can find yourself somewhere. And I want to ask you where you are today. There are some who don't want to do anything. There are some who say, oh, I can do it, but they don't do it. Uh, there are some who say, I want to do it. Wanting to do it is fine, but that is not enough. Then they go ahead and ask themselves, oh, so yes, I want to do it. How can I do it? I believe that is a, a good enough step, but that is not enough. How do I do it? You must begin to try to do it. And you should come to a point where you realize that this is not rocket science and that you can do it. And that is why I went through the trouble of trying to show you that these are ladies who went to secondary schools like you are now. They are no different from you. Some of you might even be more privileged than they are. And you must come to the point where you say, yes, I will do it. And beyond that, make the effort so that the next time we meet here, we'll be able to say, yes, I did it. I realize that today's lecture paid a lot more attention to the, the girl child as the theme said, harnessing the potential of today's girl child for the future. But as you are aware, this mentorship series is supposed to also address female academics. So it is my hope that maybe in the next session, uh, which hopefully will be in next July or sometime next year, some attention would also be paid to the female academics amongst us and how they can also progress so that people will share their experience that we can relate to. So that, as Grace Pelly said, she comes here as a lecturer and she envisions that in the next 10 to 15 years, she could be the vice chancellor of this university. And then the question is, how do I do it? What are the processes? What does it take? What kind of mentorship and guidance will she need to be able to get to that point? I believe if we're able to do that, we would have achieved a lot. I remember when in April, um, I think on the, was it on the 7th of April or so, we had a congregation, and uh, the guest speaker, Dr. Siawe Japon, heard that uh, Professor Japon had donated uh, 20,000 euro. Uh, he was sitting next to us. And, uh, he got up and said, if this poor professor can donate 20,000 euro, then I will also donate $100,000. And I can confirm that I have received that check. So it's, it's, it's a cascading effect. So uh, I received the check. And uh, I told the registrar, she saw the check. And we sent it to the director of finance and it is in our bank account. So I can assure you that the check has cleared. It wasn't a fake check. Sometimes people make promises and then they are not able to fulfill. It was not a fake check. The check has cleared. So because of this seed of 20,000 euro, we have received another $100,000 to, to support research activities in the university. So, you can do it. Uh, I can do it. And uh, to, there was a young lady who asked a question about uh, 
if you don't have anything. And the registrar said that uh, you can, whatever is in your hand, you can make use of it. So the registrar had the scissors in her hand, and she started cutting people's hair for them, and was collecting sardines, eating up. You know, there is nothing like applying yourself to do hard work. If some of us tell you our stories of how we have come this far, you have no clue. When I was in sixth form, and I mean sixth form, meat pie. Eh? I did meat pie business. I was baking and selling meat pie all around Tema. You won't believe it. The, 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 the student is looking at my face. He doesn't believe it. Yes. When I was in Form 3, between Form 3 and Form 5, I was selling things on my head eh? in Tema. Nothing I know yet be a Bro, do yeah be a and they call you and then they buy. Those days, when you go to the bakery to take the bread, eh, they give you two CDs bread and your commission was 30 pesos. Very well. So they give you two CDs, 30 pesos worth of bread. You go and sell and then you bring two CDs to the bakery. As I stand here, is bread stuck on my face? There's no bread stuck on my face. I carried bread and sold almost everything in Tema. But you have no clue. So make the best opportunity of what find yourself doing. And don't think that anything is too demanding for you. Provided you are not stealing. Provided you are not committing any crime. Put your hands to work. And the good Lord will bless you. So, I will just want to end again by that we do these things to acknowledge, to recognize honor people who do good things and we celebrate them. And through this, we hope that we can maintain and protect a legacy, even as we inculcate the leadership skills in you. So you can do it if some of us have been able to go this pathway. I can assure you that there is nothing impossible. If you apply your hands to the job, if you push and with the grace of God on your side, Success will definitely be yours. I thank you for your attention. We are gradually coming to the end of the program once the chairman has given has given his, close, his remarks. But Dr. Joyce Dare, on behalf of the committee that put this together, will come and say thank you to all of us. Let's welcome with a round of applause. Thank you. We want to thank God Almighty for being with us from the beginning of this program and for bringing it to a successful end. We thank our vice chancellor who has chaired this ceremony. He's gone into the archives and brought us lovely memories of Prof. Japon and Prof. Esiewa that we didn't know, but have, they have created an impression on us. Thank you so much. We thank our guest speaker, Prof. Esiewa, for being present with us today. You've given us such an inspiring talk, and we've all learned something. At least if we've learned nothing at all, we've learned that we should be planning. At every time, we should plan. 
Thank you so much for coming. We are very grateful. We thank Prof. Margaret Japon. It's her generosity that has brought all of us here today. If she didn't give her money, we wouldn't be sitting here. Prof, we say thank you so much. May God replenish a thousandfold so that you continue to give and to give more. We thank all the principal officers of the university, thank the registrar, the incoming registrar, the deans and directors who are here with us. We say thank you so much for coming to grace this occasion with your presence. To our young ladies from the second cycle institutions, we are very grateful to, to have you here. I know you've all learned something, at least you've been inspired to aim higher that you can always achieve your dreams. To our university community, to our teaching and non-teaching staff, our students, everybody who has taken time to be here, we say we are very grateful. To our media men, thank you. To the planning committee, all those who work behind the scenes to ensure that today's program has been successful, we say God bless you. And next year, we hope to meet again for another session. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so said Chinu Achebe, he who pays respect to the great paves way for his own greatness. And on that note, we want to sing the university anthem in honor of Professor Esiawa, who is the composer of the anthem. I crave your indulgence, let us all be standing as the university choir leads us. Control room, can we have the words on the, on the screen? If you have If you can join in, you can join in the singing.
Great, thank you, thank you, thank you. So among all the things Professor Iwa mentioned she has done, perhaps there's one thing she didn't mention, she was a prophet. And today, our tagline for our 10th anniversary is that we are great giant rising. And that is boldly <laughs> written in those words for the anthem. So we thank you once again. We want to uh, take this few announcements before we end it all. Uh, senior members here uh, will be refreshed at the seminar room at the, on my left, right, the conference room up the city auditorium. All you have students would go to the basement. All the senior high school students who are here, your package is in your buses. Oh, it's a big one. Yeah. Ah. In fact, today, if the Danny Hall food is not good, you can abandon it. Well, Ola, if you are not a Baba, you go and abandon Danny Hall food. <laughs> you don't have sardine. <laughs> and uh, students from, you have students from the Binka School of Public Health. Um, we also have a special package for you in your bus. So you are not joining the rest of uh, students at the basement. Oh, you are there. Can we see you? SPH. Oh, nice. Thank you. And so, where we pass to climb is the same place we we'll descend. We we'll start with a prayer. We will end with a prayer. And help me welcome Miss Thelma Alalbila to give us a closing prayer. Thank you. Please, shall we be upstanding? We are praying. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you very much for today. We want to thank you for giving us such a beautiful day. We want to thank you for the lives of our guest speaker. We want to thank you for the lives of the senior management, the vice chancellor, the registrar, and all the deans and directors. It's our prayer that the seed of success would be sown, especially in the hearts of the girls from the second cycle institutions, so that they can strive to get to this point and even beyond. We pray for the life of Professor Margaret Japon, for her kind soul, for starting this award scheme. We also want to pray that as she has started and opened the portal for other kind donors, astute academics, corporate world would also come to the aid of this scheme because it's a beautiful thing and it's going to bring forth, I believe, successful women. We want to pray that female academics would also get mentorship from our astute female academics who have risen through the ranks. It's our prayer that the seed of success also will be sown in them for them to aspire to be like Professor Japong, Professor Esiewa, and the others not mentioned. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we leave, uh, I crave your indulgence to also take note of this. From when Wednesday, 27th to, from the 27th to the 29th of this month. So this coming Wednesday, 
will be the beginning of Research Dissemination Forum. And it will be held here in the city auditorium and the basement. The main event will be here in the auditorium and the exhibition will be ongoing at the basement. You are all invited and let's... And Sunday the 31st of July would be the 10th anniversary Thanksgiving service. It will also be here in the city auditorium and we have the guest preacher as Archbishop Charles Ajinasari of Paris Chapel. He'll be here with us. So once again, you're all invited. Thank you. Akbet, thank you, thank you. Yes, we'll take a, a group photo quickly. Incoming registrar. We'll take a group photo here. Please join the senior members and. Please join the weekly these are directors, please join in the photograph. <laughs> Shirani, I don't so me more, I me more